What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Trick Tens. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. This is part five of Project X. This build is insane. We got a brand new Minn Kota Quest trolling motor that's going into this rig. This trolling motor is badass, guys. I cannot wait to get this thing installed and try this thing out on the water. I made a lot of progress in this video. We got the entire rod locker finished up. And oh yeah, we got this thing scanned with the brand new Proteum Proline. This this build is going to be next level, guys. I finished up a bunch of internals. I put some LED lights in the rig. It's going to be sick. Y'all better stick around at the end of this episode. Let's get right into the video, guys. All right guys, so I got the entire front deck all finished up. We got our floor drains and stuff installed in here. Got our little plier holders over there. This thing is sick, it's all coming together. The only piece of the puzzle I have left to do is to finish up this back deck right here. Now, I ran into an issue and I'm gonna show you guys cause I fucked up and that's life. Sometimes you're gonna hit speed bumps. Now, you're not gonna see this on a lot of other YouTube channels because People only show you the good stuff. But look, I welded this in here. Before I welded that earlier, I put this main cross piece in here, that angle right there. And when I welded it across here and on the other side, I didn't realize that it bowed up really bad. It actually comes up a lot. I mean, from right here on this point, look, let me get my tape measure. We got about five and a half inches on this side over here. Then in the center, that's about five and a quarter, maybe five sixteenths. This one's a little bit higher. That's a good five and a quarter. And then over here, we're back up to our five and a half. So with that being said, this piece is teeter-tottering because it's got a gap over here. If I push this down, that side's gonna come up, vice versa. It's not a huge deal. We gotta fix it though. I'm gonna cut both of these welds off here and here. We're gonna get this thing knocked down where it needs to be. Just wanted to share that with you guys because this happens to me a lot. And this is how I learn. And this is something I already should have been prepared for because that was a long span across there. I mean, that's like four foot almost. And I didn't take into consideration that it might have warped a little bit. I was trying to hurry up and finish this back deck up. Just forgot about it. And I thought about it after the fact, but I didn't catch it until I dropped the hatch in and saw it was teetering. I thought it was going to be all right. But this boat's got to be perfect because everything else in here is spot on. I'm not going to leave this sitting like that. So that's life, man. You live and learn. So I'm going to cut these off. I'm going to suck this down, weld these from the side, and then I'm going to get this thing welded back across here and here, finish this up. And then all I gotta do is grind these welds, put my sheeting piece here and here, both port and starboard, 
and everything's done and it's ready to be scanned. Tomorrow, my buddy is coming over here. We're gonna scan this entire boat. I'm gonna let you guys meet him. I'm gonna show you how we scan it. It's gonna be sick. Let's get back to work. All right guys, so I went ahead and I got this whole bag desk finished up. This thing looks sick, man. I'm glad that I went ahead and cut those wells and dropped this thing down. Now you can see it looks nice and level and square all the way across that back. This hatch dropped in here perfectly. Both of my back corner panels dropped right in there where I need them to be. I went ahead and installed a couple of little filler pieces in between these hatches. And all this is done now. Literally everything in the entire rig is ready for the scan. I'm kind of hyped about this, but in the same sense, I'm kind of nervous because it's the first time I've had a boat scan, but I'm feeling pretty confident. I did a lot of work in this. I put a lot of thought into this and I'm hoping that tomorrow we're gonna get this thing scanned and then I'm gonna have like a little bit of a weight lifted off my shoulders because I still got a lot to do. So tomorrow is going to be a big day, guys. Big step for Trick 10s. Let's get back to work. All right, guys, so it has started. We are scanning the boat. I'm here today with Brian with Seaside Customs, and he is hooking it up. I'm going to show you guys how this machine is working. He is scanning this thing. Then we're going to be able to cut and chop it the way we want to make it look. And it's going to have a cool design, guys. I'm going to turn this camera around and get a little bit of film with him doing this, put you all on the hyperlapse. I'll circle back when we get done. This is the Protum Pro Liner. This thing is expensive. I was about to buy one of these, and then I found out that Brian lives in the same city as me. So. We worked out a little thing going on here where he's gonna scan some stuff for me and he saves me from buying one. It's definitely cool though. So it's got the string on here, that thing pulls out. You can mark your points and you basically just trace the whole thing and it shows up right here on the screen. It's really neat. All right, so check it out, guys. He's got this whole thing scanned into the program. This is awesome. I mean, this really is stuff that I dig. I like learning new stuff and I like machinery. And to see the boat that I laid out sitting up into this CAD program like this, it's pretty surreal because the boat is right here in the CAD program and it's right here in real life. It's definitely cool. I'm excited to get this thing wrapped up. And it shouldn't be too long before we get this off and get back some samples of what it's going to look like when it's all installed. The Proteum Pro Line is sweet, man. That thing is really cool. Bear with me, I'm trying out something new with the camera angles. This is director's cut, and it's the first time I'm using it. But the machine is awesome. I am happy that I found Brian. The dude literally lives like two minutes from me. It's insane. You cross the main road, and he lives in the neighborhood right on the other side. So I've spent like the last year trying to find somebody with one of these machines that's local to me and i could have almost hit this dude's house with a softball so it's pretty nice but anyways the machine's sick man it made short work of this boat that he scanned the boat a lot of you may not know what that means but that is basically a cad file of the entire rig how the deck and everything's going to sit and that is just for the sole purpose of the cnc cut turf now obviously you see the boat has tons of hatches and stuff in it. And this allows me to not have to install sheet turf. With the sheet turf, I lay it down and then I have to cut all this stuff out. But this is gonna come to me like a packet. It's gonna be a sticker that I stick down on everything. So I'm hyped about that thing. I eventually might end up buying one because it would come in handy, not only just for doing the boats and the CNC turf, but I could also use it in business. If somebody comes in with a crazy looking piece, it's got big radiuses on it, I could just scan it and that way I could burn it out on my plasma table. 
But that's gonna be down the road. For right now, Brian is a killer hookup and I definitely appreciate him helping me out with this. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna start taking some of this deck apart. Like I need to finish up this rod locker. I have the wire right here. This is actually a six gauge wire and that's what we're gonna run for the trolling motor. So I'm gonna try to finish up inside of this rod locker, but I need to run that wire in there first. The way I do that is right through the gunnel on the side of the boat all the way up. This, these well built have a big bend right here and you can fish wires through there pretty easily. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna run this wire in there and then I'm gonna get up inside of this rod box and get this thing wrapped up. The way we can get on to finishing up the rest of this front deck internals. Let's get back to work. Right, so check it out the rod locker turned out good this thing is humongous and the way i put this together it's all in pieces this is something that you can do at home we obviously already had this part of it figured out i did have to cut this back at a taper and this piece i put in here i bent it here and bought it back and then bent it again inch and a half behind this this thing is strong it's sturdy everything is where it needs to be and you can tell this thing runs all the way up here and i kept this whole face of it at a 90 degree bend. This side slopes to like a 70, but the same width in the floor all the way up to the front. And what we have here from the very front of this rod locker all the way to this back corner is about eight foot two inches. So that means we'll be able to fit eight foot rods in here and they'll stop somewhere in this area right here. This rod locker turned out sick. And this is something that you guys can do at home. You can piece this thing together. Up underneath it here, I have a sheet. It's basically like two inches by six inches. And I shot rivets through here and into each side. And that's basically just like a backer plate to hold these together. I put those where all my seams are. And then I came back and shot these rivets through the side. You can see this is where the rib is at. That's actually going through the rib. And that keeps this thing nice and tight and sturdy where it can't flex around. Up here, I had to piece this thing together. This is kind of tight quarters, but I figured it out and it worked out well. We have about seven inches in the floor all the way up. And obviously it tapers out to about nine inches here. And in the back, it's more like 11 and a half, 12 inches. But now that I got all of this figured out, I do have to put some type of supports in here. I'm thinking about coming up underneath this side right here, running a one inch tube across, and I'm probably gonna shoot some rivets down through this side to hold that in place. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna tack this sheet together with that sheet that I cut out over there once I get all this installed in here. But I'm not gonna do that yet. I might go ahead and throw these cross supports in here. I'm probably gonna put two in there. And once I get the turf installed in here, then I'll come back and put that piece in. And that will be a whole lot easier because I got to put sheets of turf all up inside of this. And it's going to be hard to put that in now. I got to reach in from this face. So this is going to stay open until I finish up everything that I got to do and I'm ready for turf. But now that I got the rod locker finished, I'm going to start doing the internals. I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way. Inside of this hatch right here, we have a pan that's on the back side of this. And I need to put that pan in there. I need to build a wall on that side to separate some of these compartments inside of here. I'm going to get this whole front deck internals figured out. Let's get back to work.
just installed these green LED lights up inside of this live well. Now, if you guys are still watching, I definitely appreciate y'all because YouTube has some crazy analytics and they will tell you how many people watch and when the viewers fall off, all kinds of stuff, it's insane. But most of my viewers fall off around the nine to 10 minute mark. And that's actually grown a lot over the past couple of years because it was like two minutes when I first started, but I'm happy with 10 minutes. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start teaching more in the later parts of the video because the people that are sticking around and watching obviously they are here to learn and i'm here to give knowledge so i just installed these lights here now these lights are not nothing fancy they're not super expensive i bought these off of ebay i'll leave a link in the description of this video they have these in all different colors i got the green ones for this boat because we're going to be using green led strip lights in here it's going to match the turf and it's part of the whole theme you guys will figure that out very shortly, but these are pretty cool. You see this black part of it? This is all metal, it's still aluminum. And then it has a zinc coated nut on here. And I like to use the aluminum. I like to use the metal products. So I think they'll last a whole lot longer than the plastic ones. So what I did was I just cut a hole through the face of this live well right here. I used a 3 inch bit and I got a light here and here. Now I basically came nine inches off of either side and I think that gives it like a good distance. And they're right at the water line. So they'll still shine underneath the water, but they're gonna be on top of it too. It's gonna look good. And they're not gonna leak because I put a bunch of 3M5200 on the back side of the light before I stuck it through the hole. And then on the back side, what I did was once I ran that drill bit through the back with a 3 16th drill bit, then I came back with a hole saw bit this one right here, it's an inch and a half. And I just ran that back through this foam. Now the whole reason for that is because I need to get this foam cleared out of the way in order for me to put that nut in there. You can see the nut is sucked up tight and there's some white 3M5200 on the backside. So it definitely seeped through good and it's gonna seal this thing up nice. Now these lights, the only downside of these is that they have a very, very thin wire on here. But what you do with these, you're gonna strip this black part back and then take both of these red and black wire inside of here. You're gonna strip those back about an inch. And you're gonna take that through the butt connector all the way from one side to the other and crimp it on both sides, even once you have your new wire into it. And that will make these things work. And then they'll last a long time because these have a long lifespan. You just have to make sure you get a good connection when you connect them so that they can actually live out that lifespan. The reason I had to do that at this stage of the game is I'm getting ready to put this sheet right here up against the backside of this foam. And that's gonna insulate the slide well from both sides. It's basically like the finished side of the interior of the cooler part of the live well and it finishes off the inside with a wall for his main storage apartment up here. Now I did make this piece earlier at the shop and I made a mistake. Go ahead, we are two mistakes into this video. I'm gonna show you guys this because I don't care. I make mistakes just like everybody else. And this is something you don't see on every channel. But what I did was I bent this bottom lip right here at the shop earlier. I had it going the opposite direction and I was gonna bend this one going the opposite direction. And I second guessed myself and I flattened it out and rebent it this way. And then this is the piece I had on this side right here like that and was bent up and it's on the wrong side. Because when I put this piece over here, which was a flat piece and I bent this at home, all only lip on this piece is this lip right here because the bottom of this is a pan. It comes up. So I have an inch and a half lip here and I can shoot my rivets through there. So it's attached at the floor. And on this side right here, where you see those two rivets, I basically just put a piece of inch and a half angle that rides behind this piece and it sits flush up against this piece that's on the existing deck. And that allow that whole thing to be secured from both those sides. Now it still sits down a little bit low from the top, but I got some wires I got to pull up inside of it. But this piece over here, I wanted to make this as one piece. And bending this extra inch and a half lip right here, that allows me some play. I got about a one inch of play that I can slide this piece over. And to fix this piece, all I did was cut that piece off right there. Then I made this little piece. This is the same type of material. This is a 063 aluminum. I just bent a little inch and a half angle and I marked it up there, shot a couple of rivets to it. And now when this piece goes in here, when I put this piece in, See, I have play, I can slide it. I wanna pull it tight to this side because this piece right here, I'm gonna shoot rivets through that into the rod locker, which finishes off this side wall. And then I still have room to come back and shoot a couple rivets through here. And this piece on the floor will allow me to shoot rivets through the floor. And that will make all of this super strong. And this is something you guys can do at home. If you need to figure out how to lay out your internal hatches, this is a good lesson for you because I built the bottom one 
as a three-sided pan, one here, here, and on this side, I left this one raw. That way I have the ability to slide this one to make it fit the way I need it to fit up onto this front deck. And then this piece has an inch and a half lip on the bottom. When I tuck this tight here, shoot some rivets through here, and I can slide this left or right if I need to, to make it fit on both sides. This is pretty simple. The internals of all these hatches don't have to be super strong because they're only gonna be holding tackle, sometimes batteries, but they're not gonna be holding the weight of a person stepping on them. So it's not that important that you weld all this stuff and make this stuff indestructible because inside of here, it's like light duty. All of the framing and stuff on the top of it, yeah, that stuff needs to be welded. But down inside of these hatches, you're just trying to block everything off and finish it off. Now we are gonna come back, we're gonna turf everything inside of this hatch. Everything is getting turfed. Everything inside of all the hatches is getting turfed. But now that I got this inside of here, I'm going to shoot some rivets into this and we'll get on to something else. Let's get back to work, guys. All right, guys, so we made a ton of progress in this video so far. We got the entire boat scanned. We got a bunch of internals finished up inside of here. This rig is gonna be dope when it's finished. I still gotta figure out the internals inside of this hatch. This is the big storage hatch that's going in the front of his live well. I'm gonna do this one the same way that I did the one that's in the back of his live well. It's gonna be the same exact type of deal with a floor pan and then the side walls inside of here. I'm gonna get this thing wrapped up, and in the next episode, I'm gonna show you guys how I do all of the electronics in this boat, and then we're gonna get this thing painted. And by that time, we should have a proof for the turf that's gonna go in this rig. That is going to blow your mind. I'm hyped about that. And Billy's gonna paint this thing. I'm gonna get Billy to paint this thing. It's gonna be dope, guys. You don't want to miss this one. I'm trying to keep the videos in the 20 to 25 minute mark, because that allows me to drop them to you once a week. Sometimes two times a week if you're lucky. I appreciate you guys watching. Hit that like and subscribe button. Leave a comment. I want to know what y'all think. I don't give a fuck good or bad. I want to hear from you. I appreciate you guys. If you want some of my merch, you can check that out on tricktens.net. If you're interested in getting some work done, hit me up on tricktensjohnboach.com. Send me an email and I'll help you guys out. I'll see y'all next time. Let's get back to work.